Uh, good stuff. This is not the first time we've seen Monte. We've seen Monte, I think, in previous days here in the ladder so far, playing up against a great clash. I think when we saw Monte, Monte did really well against a band. But I'm not too sure. It's been quite the week here, but nonetheless, here's game one between Monte and Great Clash. The Bayonetta. Honestly, she's one of the few characters that when you think about Bayonetta, you think about the old days of Smash 4 when you died. But one of the things about Bayonetta here and coming out to Ultimate is her neutral plan isn't as good as it used to be. And that's definitely something that Game of Watch somewhat accelerates a little bit more over than Bayonetta. Just because Ooh. you know she has to get her confirms coming out of side special more than ever. Yeah, a lot of it starts with, you know, trying to punish shield drops or jumps out of shield and Game of Watch can sit in shield. <laughs> yeah. Like that. And the Game of Watch honestly has a better time punishing opponents on shield. So if Bayonetta tries to use one of her neutral tools to get in things like heal slide, oh Game of Watch can easily punish that with an up on shield. But what a punish from Gate Clash and get in the landing forward smash right before Monty has a chance to put his feet on the ground. Great Clash started to have a really good feeling that Monty kept on trying to land aggressively and called it out. All right, Monte kind of took his time. There's the back air play out the ledge. I'm sorry, platform. Which we all the way through. Double up air. Monte still able to survive here. Oh, the best smash. of Monte. Nice dash there from Monte trying to take it, take out this first stock. Oh, what good tech off the stage there from Great Clash. Oh man, you can see that Great Clash is playing very reserved and beat and punish style right now. Yeah, and that's something that Bandit kind of accelerated, accelerates more in so in this game now and Smash Four. Smash Four Bandit had a few more. It's not that she had a few more tools, they're roughly the same, but her tools definitely had a better, bigger impact compared to Ultimate. So you can tell that Great Clash has to stick to one of Bayo's bread and butter's design, which is pretty much the bait and punish. Not being able to use that heal slide, but able to use the afterburner kick into the back air and seeing Monte at high percents, Great Clash can yeah. definitely take the stock. But given Game of Watch's oh. weight, but wow, what a down air. <laughs> that was a raw down air. I was about to say that like the best that Monty's been able to really get out of these interactions on that stock were just relatively speaking bad trades for Monty, but finally able to take that stock there with the down air. Yeah, I think this this is really gonna boil down to how Great Clash can play around Uppy out of shield and Uppy in general, so oh looking for the kill. Oh, oh did I get it! We're reading out the direction of air dodge too. That's stuff from Great yeah. Clash just being able to hold the bullets. The, the guns first, are such a good spot dodge call out. Yeah, and you can charge them, and of course the first hit has uh -oh. the most knockback, and you can definitely kill opponents that way as well. Great play to catch the downer with the afterburner. Again? He's taking this man to the sky. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Bayonetta is looking to come back. Great Clash taking game one. What a play. The lawnmower is like, wait, already? <laughs> oh, I'm going to start it, man. Look at this. Look, will you see this lawnmower? <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were going to the skies, man. Lawnmower was like, wait, it's not my shift yet. <laughs> <laughs> Great Clash was looking to send us home early, man. That was a play, and I haven't seen that from quite some time. That that was a rare sight, everybody. Game and Watch struggling to land. <laughs> but that, like, was so, that was so good from Great Clash, because you can tell Great Clash had a firm understanding of Game and Watch's typical landing options and once you understand your opponent's game plan and their opponent and your opponent's characters you can start to pick apart their game plan but not only their game plan the character itself making the matchup a little much better for you all right let's see how monty decides to try and do things differently in game two his counter pick is to battlefield honestly solid call uh Bandit still gets some pretty decent options here in Battlefield. Honestly, I feel like in, in Ultimate, she doesn't have not much bad stages, but anything with a platform is relatively totally good for her. And then for Monte, nice watch time. it's also pretty much the same given story here. But we'll see what all Green Cash can do as Monte has a little bit of a lead here coming out to Game 2. Yeah, you see, Great Clash is playing very defensively and very safe around what Monte is likely to do, just looking for an overcommitment from the Demon Watch main. Yeah. Oh, oh down air work there. Yeah, that's so close for Great Clash to being able to call that out. Good afterburner yeah. kick. Great patience there because oh. that's Game and Watch. Oh, man. 
That yeah. entire sequence, Monty was putting hitboxes where he believed Great Clash was going to be and calling him out every single time. Again! Whew. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing about Monte. Like, you, that upper smash was a good call because the one common option you'll see a Bayonetta use at the ledge is Afterburner Kick. So that effectively yeah. shut that out from Great Clash. So that's going to be a fourth throw. Great play here. It sets up the chef. I was going to say Great Clash wants to kind of hold back a little bit. There's the punish. Can he get the back air? No play. Wow. It's definitely like a funky timing to like punish uh, Game Watchers up B when you get witch time like that. Yeah. And that's the crazy thing too, is when you witch time certain characters, depending where they are in their animation, if they're in the middle of a spot dodge animation and you caught the witch time in the middle of their invincibility, that invincibility has a chance of running all the way through. It's really, <laughs> really jank and weird, but I, that's literally the explanation I've heard for it. Nonetheless, oh, nice. I'm back, back here. here. Yeah. <laughs> You said it, man. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's a good move, man. It's two hits, and it's got the perfect angle to connect to that back air, which has pretty solid knockback. Definitely one of the moves Bayonetta had back in Smash 4. Or kill confirms, I would say. Right now, it's still a significant hill to climb for Grey Clash. As Monte right now has the advantage of just allowing Grey Clash to really, I mean, again, Bayonetta's ranged options do very little. You can let Bayonetta basically sit there and shoot guns at you, and it's like, okay, cool. Oh no! Oh. Grey Clash, like, that was really rough too, because Grey Clash had the right idea, tried to go for a cross up on the shield. Unfortunately, Grey Clash went back to the scene of the crime, and Monte was there to immediately put this man in his place. And it was really, really rough. I still have to come in for Grey Clash for trying for that cross up. Yeah, Monte was like, there is no crossing up my shield. Here's my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here, here's one of the, here's a really great anti air. Right now, Grey Clash is starting to get a bit more going here. Oh, great stuff using the forward smash, but still able to hold it to try to get the bullet hits out. Monte using the ever underrated Game Watch jab to get, you know, great clutch off stage. Looking for the back air again, not quite going to get it. Oh, he shifted his hurt box. <laughs> he, her up smash shifted his hurt box, and that's why great clutch whiffed the back hit of up tilt. That's the, <laughs> that's, tragic. that's the crazy thing about ultimate too is hurtbox shifting is much more prominent as it's ever been compared to the other smash games right and this definitely yeah. comes in part from like namco bandai as a whole i've said this many many times for namco bandai when they made tekken hurtbox shifting is super important in tekken and because of that that kind of carries over to ultimate giving bandai namco's involvement with the game makes sense I will say that, like, my limited watching of Tekken, uh, competitive Tekken, it's so funny to see them bobbing and weaving all the time. It's like, that doesn't look natural. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, this. yeah, the uh, the backdash cancels. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, but, you know, that's that's what makes Tekken, honestly, a really entertaining game to watch. It feels just like boxing, but it's got its own unique style to it, and that's what I love about Tekken. All the characters are really fun. But uh, we're not seeing Tekken here. We are seeing a Bandai Namco involvement, though, as we saw the hurt box shifting coming up from Monte. Game three, we're back on PS2. I think removing the, the top platform means there's one less landing mix up for the game watch, so I can imagine why Great Clash chose this. Nice back air. The ABT coming through. Oh, almost oh. with the back air, too, coming up from Great Clash, but that wasn't going to be enough. Mm. I think Monte was trying to look for a very cheeky follow-up to dash attack, not quite going to get it. Threatening here. That was a really weird exchange. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, right before the start. Of, like, that's the thing, too. Is like Game Watch is able to shut down Bayonetta's options, but good stuff on Great Clash, able to shut down Monte's landings because that was going to be a really crucial opportunity there to put this at even stock. Good stuff using the forward to kind of cross up Monte. Great Clash starting something big here. Wow. Good trade for Monte, but unfortunately gets... Taking the skies yet again. All right, good stuff for Great Clash, kind of stalling the landing here. And great, honestly, when you think about tying your opponent there, it's also setting up for a potential whiff by trying to see Monte swing 
a little bit too wide and able to punish that. And like you said, Fro, Bayonetta pretty much accelerates here at the bait and punish game, and that's going to be a great clash to find those opportunities. I do like Monte's had a bit more success in like disrupting the rhythm Great Clash wants to be in. Oof, can't do much about disrupting that big old tackle. <laughs> Monte now. Oh, nice. Recognizing just where the hit stun was going to land and being able to follow up there with a big F tilt. Yeah, forward throw will definitely take it at that high percent. <laughs> Bandit is still having that forward throw. Coming up from Smash 4 is definitely wonders for her at the late game. Uh, not as good as it used to be, nonetheless. I mean, definitely Bayonetta is one of those characters. Oh, man. Monty tried to escape to the sky. That was his last resource. Oh, oh man. Fro. Fro, where are we going? Where are we going, Fro? To the skies. <laughs> that, was, that was a to the skies play yet again from Great Crash. Oh, man. Pulling it out at the last second. Man, what a play. Just when you thought Bayonetta wasn't enough she definitely pulls it out at the last second 2-1 over monte